What is up? What is going on, everybody? As usual, I am back with the Mariners post game recap. We got to talk about a loss today. It's, it's we haven't had a lot of them to talk about, but we're gonna have to talk about it today. Before I get started, if you guys can do me a favor, as always, hit that subscribe button for me. I'm about 40 subs away from 2200. Um, so if you guys could help me out there and hit that sub button, I would appreciate it. Um, and then hit the like button on the stream as well. That just lets YouTube know you're enjoying it so other people may enjoy it as well. Thank you guys so much for the great engagement on these. Uh, truly, truly appreciate it. And this channel wouldn't have the success I've had so far without all of you. So thank you. Thank you so much to every single one of you. Um, we've enjoyed the wins together, right? We, we got to get through and push through some of the losses together. Um, first, let's talk about what kind of led up to this game. I'll obviously talk about the game a little bit because there's a lot to get into, I think, with this one. But let's talk about the first things that happened. Before a pitch was even thrown, George Kirby scratched with an illness. Julio scratched with a left foot soreness. And then two innings into the game, Ty France leaves with, I believe, a wrist injury that might have happened on that pickoff attempt um, from Luke Weaver that hit him. So Luke Weaver ends up getting the start. Um, Cade Marlowe ends up going into center field. Um, and then Mike Ford ended up coming in and playing first base. That's a lot to deal with for any team, you know, and I'm sure I'll hear that making excuses. Listen, Julio and George Kirby are two of the best players on this team and losing them for a game. Yeah, that that's absolutely going to hurt this team's chances. Um, is it a game they still probably should have won? Probably. They should probably beat Oakland every time out that they're a better baseball team than Oakland. Um, so there's really no scenario where you're probably still not favored to win the game against the A's, uh, but it certainly takes a game that you are heavy favorites with a potential Cy Young pitcher on the mound and an MVP in the lineup, and you take those guys out, it certainly evens the playing field a little bit. And you can see, you can see, uh, listen, Julio's been one of the best hitters on the planet, second in the American League in F4. Listen, losing him was bad. You saw it. You saw the bottom of the lineup really didn't have that depth. Uh, tonight and missing tie hurt, especially against um, a left-handed starter. And you could see that with having to have um, left-handers like Marlowe and Mike Ford go in for these guys, um, Mark Kotze was really, really able to play the pitching matchups uh, in this game as well, unfortunately. So you never really got great platoon advantages against the Oakland Athletics bullpen. Again, you should still beat Oakland, but you know the Mayors were 8-0 against Oakland this year. They're 8-1. You cannot expect to beat any team every game in a season. It's just not going to happen. So we'll, we'll get into the game, but for, for big picture, again, deep breath, everybody, deep breath. You're not going to win every game against Oakland. Remember last year, they went and at the end of the year, they lost a series in Oakland. They lost a series in Kansas City. It, it does happen. Um, I know Texas and Houston won. It's going to be a dogfight in the AL West. It is going to come down to those last 10 games of the season. It's going to be back and forth. Houston's going to go out in front. Seattle's going to go back in front. Texas is going to go in front. It is going to be a battle. You know, it's it just, it's going to come down to those 10 games. Now, I mean, you know, we could lose every game between here and then. Who knows? More than likely, that's not going to happen. So take a deep breath. Still tied for first. Everything's right there in front of you. And Toronto loses. So in terms of your cushion of making the playoffs, uh, you're three and a half up on Toronto. But again, that's technically going to be four and a half because you're going to have the tiebreaker over the Blue Jays. So you're still in really good shape overall. Um, you know, it, it, like I said, so don't, don't panic about it. And, and before it becomes like, Oh, you can't lose games to Oakland. I, the Atlanta Braves got swept by the Oakland A's. It, it does happen. And especially when two of your best players can't go in the game, it, it's going to make a difference. And we saw it tonight, both the Kirby and Julio, um, you know, injuries or illness uh, affected them. Now the good news is, you know, Kirby's an illness. So, you know, that stinks. I said about Julio's last week. That stinks for him. Uh, he's probably puking his brains out right now. And I'm sure he's not feeling great, but it's not an injury. You know, what you don't want to see is some shoulder or elbow thing or something or any arm issue with Kirby. A little sick. Get over that. I, let him have his, I, just kind of skip his turn and then get him back in there when he's ready to go. I will say George Kirby on his deathbed probably could have thrown six shutout innings today, but you know, um, get better George and, and get back out there for his next start. Um, a, a little, maybe worried about the Julio injury, not too much, but you know, obviously it, it was enough where he couldn't pinch hit in this game. So it's clearly something that, you know, it, it's, you know, left foot soreness, probably not anything too major, 
but like I said, enough that he couldn't even get an at bat tonight late in the game. So it, it's something to monitor. I, I would guess that Julio does not play tomorrow, and that gets him three days off because you have today, tomorrow, and Thursday. But the good news is it, it doesn't. None of these look like long term things. It seems like day to day stuff. I'll try to pull up Twitter before I get out of here and see if there's any info from Scott on that. And then the Ty France thing. I'm assuming again probably minor. Um, I know Ty France hasn't had a great season this year, but he's going to be better than the guys um, that are going to come in after him. You know what I mean? So you still want Ty uh, in there as your everyday first baseman. Um, so that's the good news is it doesn't look like anything major with any one of these players. So you survive, you move on, and you try to win the series tomorrow. Now, I will say, like, yeah, we, we saw the ramifications with not having those guys in the lineup here. If I didn't get into it already, I'm sorry, the Oakland A's defeat the Seattle Mariners 3-1. to one. I should probably get into that. So let, let's get into the game a little bit here, and then I'll kind of talk about where this lineup, you know, needed those guys tonight. Um, start with the pitching, as I always do. Luke Weaver got the start. You know, he wasn't very good. Three and two-thirds, seven hits, three runs, three or no walks, no Ks. Um, gave up a home run to Seth Brown and to Shea Langoliers. Listen, t- tough. He, he, you know, Luke Weaver didn't wake up tonight thinking he was going to make a start uh, for the Mariners. I'd probably be a little bit more critical if this was a scheduled start. Uh, but, you know, up until an hour and a half before, he didn't know he was starting. Um, the stuff looks all right. He's throwing 96. Um, it's just a lot of two strike pitches over the heart of the plate. Um, the one to Langoliers was a two strike pitch, which was terrible right over the middle. You know, there's a reason Luke Weaver was available for free in August. There's a reason, um, you know, and the good news is it does look like Kirby's going to miss any extended time. Kind of an audition. I thought tonight for Weaver to maybe force that six man rotation that they wanted to do with Emerson Hancock, um, and it would be nice, you know, with, with Brian Wu and Bryce Miller on some, you know, innings limitations and everything. But I just don't think you can trust Luke Weaver uh, to get outs here or to get consistently get outs. I, against any other team, I'd probably say Weaver was fine tonight. I honestly would. If this was a spot start against Houston or Texas or Tampa or Baltimore, I'd probably say he was all right. But against Oakland, you know, an eight ERA or whatever that comes out to today is just not good enough. No strikeouts either. Bullpen did their job. Um, Campbell an inning and a third with a strikeout. Matt Brash a shutout inning. Trent Thornton two shutout innings and Saucedo a strikeout. Or excuse me, a shutout inning. Uh, no walks by pitching. Mariners pitching. Just three strikeouts. Um, you know, listen, Oakland's not good. So it's always very hard to judge these things. But listen, the pen got the outs and, and did their job. They kept Oakland to three, and they gave this offense a chance to win the game, despite everything, despite the fact that you didn't have George Kirby, despite the fact that Luke Weaver was not very good. At the end of the day, holding Oakland to three, it's a game you feel like you should win. So let's um, – I'm not going to get so much into lineup. I'm going to talk about a couple, couple opportunities the Mariners had here. In the bottom of the fourth was really the best opportunity they had. Bases loaded, two outs. Cade Marlowe drew a walk, which scored a run. And then Jose Caballero came up. Um, Waldachuk, the A starter, was struggling to throw strikes. Got behind Caballero, 2-0. and And Cabe swings 2-0 and and pops it up. I want to say something right off the bat. I don't have a huge problem with Caballero swinging 2-0. and um, I, I really don't. You should be swinging 2-0. and That's when you're going to get hittable pitches. The problem was that was not a very good pitch to hit. It was actually a pretty good pitch by Waldachuk. It was 95 in on the hands. Let that one go. It, it might even been borderline enough where you maybe even with Waldachuk not having thrown strikes, you maybe get that call and maybe it's 3-0. and um, And with the fact that he's struggling to throw strikes, and I think if you're Jose Caballero, you take a pitch there. Julio, Teo, Gino, Cal, I'm not going to get on them as much for trying to crank one out of there in that instance. But I think Caballero's got to let that pitch go. Again, don't have a problem swinging 2-0. and You should be swinging 2-0. and that, That's the time when you should crank it loose. And I get it. A pitcher's struggling to throw strikes. You think you're probably going to get one middle-middle uh, as a get-me-over. But he didn't. Uh, big at-bat there. Uh, and again, just it, well, I'll go through the lineup here. I said I wasn't, but I'm going to because I want to touch on a couple things here. Um, bottom of the ninth is really the only other time the Mariners had a rally. Um, two outs, nobody on. Josh Rojas, singles. Uh, J.P. Crawford doubles down the line, second and third, and Trevor May gets Geno striking out. Geno missed a couple hanging, breaking balls, I thought, um, and then he just didn't have a chance against May's fastball. Um, 
It went up on Gino, and Gino just couldn't catch up to it. Uh, the breaking balls were the one Gino needed to hit. There was one, I think he fouled off kind of down the third baseline. I think it was an 81-mile-per-hour sweeper. I don't remember which pitch of the at-bat it was, but that was the one Gino needed to do damage on. That was the one he could have probably put down the line and tied it up. So it, it just felt like one of those games. You, you know, if you guys can relate, there's always seems to be five or ten games a year in baseball and maybe one or two in football that you just go into it and it just does not feel like your night. It just nothing really works, nothing clicks. It just feels like the baseball gods aren't going to let you win it. And that was kind of tonight. I'm not trying to blame some other entity for the Mariners losing. They didn't get the job done. But it just felt like one of those games where, you know, you lose Kirby, you lose Julio right off the bat, you end up losing Ty, uh, leaving runners on, not really having a good offensive game. Probably a game the Mariners truthfully didn't really deserve to win, to be perfectly honest. Um, you know, if they did win it, I'd probably just say, yeah, the A's are really bad. Um, i had been happy about it. Trust me, this team's on a roll. You know, I, I think they deserve every win they get, but they did not feel like they played well enough to win. Let me get in the lineup real quick. I will point out, looking at the box score here, Seth, Seth Brown's home run in the first inning, exit velo of 94.4, um, and only went 351. I'm curious. I'm going to look up Savant here and see what the expected batting average on that was. Let me see if I can pull up baseball Savant real quick. Um because I'm curious, because that looks like it was not hit very hard. Let's see, where it is? No, oh, somehow it took me back to MLB.com. Come on. Where is Mariners and A's? There we go. And top exit velo hits were all A's today, by the way, looking at Savant. I mean, Mariners only had four hits, and they had two going into the final inning. They had one going into the eighth. Um, most of the swing and misses were from the A's. I mean, truthfully, probably a game the A's deserve to win. I, I mean, like I said, top exit velos all with the A's there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, Seth Brown home run expected batting average of 0 0.80. So, I mean, in Luke Weaver's defense, Brown just got to that one. Oh, and then also in the bottom of the second, I think Dylan Moore hit a ball about 400 feet that was caught at the wall for an out. I'm curious what the expected batting average on that one was. Where is that fly out? 890 expected batting average. So sometimes the baseball gods just aren't smiling on you. Seth Brown gets a home run on a ball with expected batting average of 0 .80. Dylan Moore hits a fly out on a ball with expected batting average of 890. Um, again, you know, I don't think the Mariners necessarily deserve to win this game, but sometimes little things like that. You know, Dylan Moore just missed it. Seth Brown gets it. Just felt like a game that weren't destined to win. All right, let's finally get in the lineup for the fifth time here. Uh, JP one for three, two walks on base three times. JP did his thing. Uh, JP did what he had to do. Gino 0 for 5. In a game when you were missing Julio and missing Kirby against a lefty, Gino needed to be better today. Gino needed to step up and he didn't. It, it happens, but I, I said on Twitter, it felt like a game they needed Gino or Teo to homer to win, and they couldn't get it today. Teo was 1 for 3. Uh, not a great game, but had one of the hits, and he was hit by a pitch, so Teo did reach twice. Rough game for Cal. He was 0 for 3 with the walk, hit into a double play. Uh, Ty was 0 for 1. Mike Ford was one for two with the walk. So, you know, re reached base twice. You know, it can't be too bad. Canzone had an awful game. Really rough game for Dom Canzone. He looked overmatched against left-handed pitching. And he's had some good at-bats against lefties, but he was bad today. It, it, he was definitely one of the reasons they lost. Like, I'm not, I would never pin one game or one loss on any one player. Uh, but man, Canzone was brutal today. And especially with... You know, in that gap there in front of Demo with Ford reaching a couple times and after the top of the order, uh, Canzo needed to do something just and just couldn't. Uh, Dylan Moore was 0 for 3 with a walk, just missed a home run. Cade Marlowe was 0 for 3 with an RBI and a walk. Caballero 0 for 3, Rojas 1 for 1. It, it, it's been kind of unnoticed because the team's been winning so much. But man, without Julio in there, this lineup, and even with Ty France coming out, this lineup against left-handed pitching is pretty rough. Um, you know, Cade Marlowe did have the RBI walk to his credit. That That's great. He put up a good at-bat, but man, he had no chance in some of these at-bats. Struck out twice. He is swinging and missing a ton. Getting Jared Kelnick back is very important. It's kind of gone unnoticed a little bit because Marlowe, and listen, Marlowe's done a nice job. I appreciate it. I think he can be a fourth outfielder. I, I, I have nothing against Cade Marlowe being on this team. Um, and he's done admirably in, in Kelnick's absence. But it's starting to rear its head that this team needs Jared Kelnick back. And it sounds like Thursday he's going to start his rehab assignment. 
So getting Jared Kelenic back will be great. Not saying Kelenic would have won the game for them. They may still have lost this game tonight, but they need Kelenic back. Canzone can't be playing too much against lefties. I'm not against him getting some at-bats there. And, you know, this is where missing Julio, missing Ty. Another name that I've mentioned recently, but again, it's been kind of forgotten because they've won so many games. How good would Tom Murphy's name have looked in this lineup tonight? You could have had Teo in right. Canzone would have been out. Tom Murphy at catcher. Cal at DH. Um, Demo in left. Yeah, you're going to have to put Marlowe or somebody in center field with Julio. Nothing you can do there. But man, how much better is that lineup with Tom Murphy? Do they win that game with Tom Murphy in there? Now, you know, again, who knows? Murphy go over four. But imagine, you know, instead of Canzone or Marlowe down there, you've got the Murph coming up. You know, or instead of Cobby in that tough spot, you know, I, I don't know. You could put Demo at second, whatever you do. Um, getting Tom Murphy back is really important for this team. They absolutely need it against left handed pitching. Um, Julio's obvious. We know Julio needs to be in there, but they need Tom Murphy back. Um, I wouldn't be against, if you guys saw earlier today, the uh, Los Angeles Angels put about half their roster on waivers. Uh, they put Giolito, Dominic Leone, Ronaldo Lopez, Hunter Renfro, I think CJ Crone, I could be wrong on that, Randall Grichik, and Lucas, did I say Giolito already? Did I say Giolito, Lopez, Leone, Matt Moore, and Matt Moore on waivers. Wouldn't be against giving Randall Grichik a look if he gets to you. I don't know if he's going to get to the Mariners, but they could use a righty outfielder here. Like in a game like this, they kind of could have used like a Randall Grichik, someone like that. You know, not the end of the world. I'm not saying like, oh my God, go get Randall Grichik. But if he's there, I think it's worth putting in a claim. Um, and I'd also look at the relievers. I'd look at Lopez and Matt Moore as well. I don't think they're going to get to Seattle. I don't care about Giolito. Hunter Renfro stinks. I don't want Hunter Renfro. But Grichik and Moore and Lopez may be, may be worth a look. So, And you kind of see it in a game like this. You know, you you can see a little bit of that. So, uh, Also, like I said, need Tom Murphy back. 100% need the Murph back. So just kind of like I said, the title says just a perfect storm of, you know, everything that could have gone wrong tonight did. You know, right off the bat, no Kirby, no Julio. Uh, the vibes were just shot. I, I want to give a shout out to the crowd. The crowd was absolutely fantastic tonight. Um, kudos to T-Mobile. Man, were they loud in that fourth inning. They were absolutely tremendous. What energy tonight from that crowd. Uh, could not be more proud to be a Mariners fan tonight. This town, this city is ready for some postseason baseball. We saw it last year. Um, we saw that reaction on the Cal Raleigh home run. We saw how loud they were for game three. Man, is this really turning into a great baseball city. Um, great energy. And that bottom of the fourth inning, a Tuesday night, against the Oakland A's, and that crowd was humming. The bottom of the ninth, hearing the Gino, Gino, so cool to hear. So huge shout. If you were at the park tonight, uh, huge shout out to you. And that might even be the title of the video is the fans were great because um, you guys absolutely, absolutely were. So that is going to be it today. I want to give a shout out to my channel members. I've been meaning to do it for each post game, and I keep forgetting. Uh, if you guys want, check out the membership in the uh, channel page. Um, did a contest giveaway, a members-only live stream yesterday, which is really fun. So shout out to all the channel members, Kevin Kirby, Trevor uh, Hiddle, if I said that correctly. If I said anything wrong, let me know. Uh, Dalen Law, no punt intended, Y2K, Rich Jard, Samantha Sanchez, PA Niners fan 87, Mr. Moses, the contest winner, William Cook, Hannah, Chris, and Gunny Studios. Thank you guys for all being channel members. Have a great night, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow with the post-game recap. Move on. You know, throw it away. Got to move on. Oakland's going to get some wins. You're not going to win every game. Chance to win a series tomorrow. It's going to be a dogfight. It is going to be a dogfight for the AL West. You're not going to run away with it. Um, Toronto lost, so your playoff spot still. It, truthfully, that Mariners' playoff odds probably went up today, in all honesty. So keep it going. Bounce back. Get the win tomorrow. Hopefully Bryce Miller is sharp. Um, you don't want to lose a series against Oakland for sure. Um, you know, that, that wouldn't be very good. I still wouldn't be, you know, the, it's not the end of the world, but, uh, get, get the series W. So I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday night. And as always go Mariners. Peace.